Hi, uh, I'm Tom Mason. I'm a professional wildlife and nature photographer. I specialize in uh, environmental portraits of animals and remote camera trap photography. I'm Damien Chigi. I'm a 360 degree photographer and I specialize in landscape and urban environments. And uh, today we've come up to the top of Mol Hubbog to visit Wex Photo and Video's most remote camera shop in Britain. What we're going to be doing is having kind of a bit of a friendly competition, taking pictures in our own style uh, to come up with some different pictures of the location. But before we do that, what we're going to do is have a look through the camera bags and uh, show you what we've got with us. Uh, today I've brought with me uh, the 360 camera that I, that I use all the time, which is the, the Ricoh Theta Z1, which has got uh, two one inch sensors and is probably the best 360 camera for taking photos. And with that, I, I travel light and I've got a, uh, a monopod, a weighted monopod, which I use with this, which is the best thing to use with a 360 camera because of the, the, the small footprint. So, and, and I've got all I've also got in a bag is an extra charger and an extra phone to just use the camera with. I'm packing extremely light today. This is, this is all I've really got with me. So hopefully that's gonna be enough. Right, so in my camera bag, um, I'm traveling heavy as I always am as a wildlife photographer. Um, in there, I've got my Z9, then my kind of go-to camera with my 300 2.8, my favorite lens. I have to take it everywhere with me. Uh, then as well as that, I've got a 17 to 35 I use all the time. I have my 70 to 200. That's great for kind of isolating stuff. And then um, other than that, I've got the drone, the new uh, Mini 3 Pro, and uh, hopefully I should get the job done. Right, so we got up to the shop. I'm just gonna get ready to make my pictures. I've um, got my binoculars out to kind of scout the environment that's really nice. Uh, and notice that the shop is nicely positioned. Um, so I can have it on the kind of left-hand side of the shot. And then we've got the, um, you know, Snowden is off behind. So what I'm gonna try and do is make a panoramic image, shop up uh, on the left, and then the landscape off to the side. It means I think I'm gonna to have to head down here a little bit further, drop down a little bit lower. That's gonna give me a bit of foreground. I can shoot the shop on the side, give me a little bit of depth, and that should be something nice. Snowden's starting to get a bit of cloud on it. I think as I come down here, I'm gonna have to move quite fast to hopefully get the background that I want. That's looking reasonably, really quite nice. And also this ridge looks great. Let's go down here. Nope. There's a problem with landscape photography and mountainous environments. You walk down one bit, think it's going to look nicer. I have to walk back up because it looks better where you started. I think we're going to get the camera out somewhere here. Let's start looking at the compositions. Oh. And from here I can see 300 is going to be a bit tight. So we'll probably switch out and have a 70 to 200. And one thing is get nice and low. Um, Low, I'm going to lose a bit more of the mountain, so probably going to be, I don't know, kind of mid height to give me a bit of the ridge in the background. Really like this mountain out to the right hand side, so I think I'm going to pan the whole way across there and stitch that together. Right, so I'm just setting up the shot and uh, probably a good chance to talk about panos. One of the things I always try and do when I'm stitching a pano is just make sure that you take really good number of images with really good overlap. It's going to make it so much easier to stitch in post. I generally just stitch in Lightroom, super easy nowadays. Uh, but if I overlap at least like two thirds of the picture, it's going to give me much more potential for the like, software to get it right. But this is looking really nice. You want to definitely make sure that once you've focused, like uh, lock it out so you don't trick it again. And of course, with the tripod locked out, I can also just use the um, the little extra um, kind of pan at the bottom to just move the camera um, rather than um, rather than kind of adjusting it and moving it as I go. It's gonna give me a bit of a better stitch. Of course, if you do not properly use, use panoramic heads and everything like that, uh, but nowadays with the software, you usually get away with it. So I'm just gonna do a pretty easy stitch today and see how it looks. Initial impressions of a, of a, of a scene like this is, uh, is it's amazing for 360 because obviously you've got an amazing vista of, of all of the North Wales coast and Snowdonia around you. 
also I'm, I'm obviously focusing on these uh, these piles of rock and this sculpture here. Something like this, I'm looking to probably lower, get a lower angle of the front from the camera. So then we'll dominate the picture. I'm looking to probably do a reverse um, tiny planet. So it'll be a circular, the sky will be in the middle. This will be a feature in the, the, the final picture. I shoot on manual. Um, generally, uh, so I've, I've knocked the uh, the ISO down as low as it can go to to, be, to have as much um, to be as sharp as possible and um, as, as little noise as possible. Um, the aperture is largely irrelevant in this camera because it's, the wide angle is so wide that virtually everything's in focus regardless. It only it only really acts as, as to as, as a neutral density thing to sort of knock it down. And I'm shooting at a 125th of a second because it's, even though it's getting a bit dull, it's still quite light and I like to expose for the sky. Uh, and then normally that, uh, that's what, that's what will, you, you'll blow out. So usually in uh, this, this camera does shoot raw, so you can usually recover the details uh, of, of, the, of the light if it's slightly underexposed. So I, slight, I tend to slightly underexpose the, the, uh, uh, the landscape and expose for the, for the sky. So what I'll do is I'll just crouch down and take the shot and then I'll remove myself in Photoshop afterwards. The, the, the thing also about this, this, this camera is you don't really know what you've got. So you've got to take a, you've got to mix it up and try to take a few different, different angles. There's also a big differential between um, if you move the camera even two meters, the picture you, final picture you'll get is, can be radically different because of the enormous drop off um, effect you get with the uh, the, the super wide angle lenses, the fisheye lenses, um, which are very, very wide. So just moving it from there to there is usually enough to actually cause a, give a big, a big difference in, in, the, in the final image. Uh, and another thing I do, just to mix it up, because sometimes it, it is, is what I do is, is what I call a, a fake dr drone shot. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll put it on a reasonably high shutter speed, so I'm on 1, 1 16th of 116th of a second, and I'll, I'll actually hold it above my head. The camera is approximately 12 foot, maybe 15, 14 foot off the ground. And the, the, again, the, the drop off of the wide angle is such that it almost looks like a drone shot because it could, it, 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 it feels like it, it, may, it might be 15 foot, but it looks like it's sort of 30 or 40, 50, 50 foot off the ground, maybe not 50 foot off the ground, but it does, does make a huge difference. And it's relatively easy because you're in the blind spot of the camera to remove yourself from the image. Right, so I've been up here uh, for a, a little while now, and um, so I've got some. I think I've got some quite interesting shots of the, of the environment on the top of the uh, top of the mountain. So we're going to go over to uh, to Tom, uh, who's, who's shooting the, the shop over over 100 yards over there, and, and see what's happening over there. And then I'm going to shoot the shop as well. Right, so the um, mist kind of rolling in on Snowden, so. I'm thinking about moving sides. I've got a few shots from this angle. Um, grass is all right, it's a foreground, but it looks a little bit uh, kind of plain and boring. So I'm gonna pop down the other side and see what it looks like facing that way, because now you can actually see the beach and everything behind. So I'm wondering if that's gonna give me a bit of a better angle on the shop. It's always good to walk around the subject and see if you can get something different. Ah, that's pretty handy. Oh. Right, I might bang this in on the other side. <laughs> I mean, this little sign's really kind of adding to the foreground, I think. Uh, I'm just trying to make sure my depth's working nice, pushing down to F11, make sure we can see all that nice wax on the back. Right. I'll probably do this final thing, pop the drone up out there, because I can't actually get to the place where I'd really like to be. There's a little bit out there and uh, see if we can get more of a above landscape shot quickly. With this sort of camera, you're kind of limited by what you can do because obviously you can't change the focus, you can't change the thing. So you're going to look for different angles and different uh, things. So I'm obviously going to focus. My main thing immediately strikes me is obviously the branding and the name of the shop. So which is going to be the focal point of the picture. You don't want the stitch line across the two um, lenses on anything particularly important. So you want to get that in one side if possible. And I think also I'll do one of my, one of these uh, fake drone, drone shots. So I'll, try, I'll hold it above my head and then I'll remove myself 
in the final image. In fact, you can do that without actually using the camera. You, could, there's, you can do it manually. Start the timer and hold it as high as you can. Try not to see my midriff. So um, before I fly the drone, I will say we have got a permit to fly, something you've always got to check before you do it. Um, also, you know, just make sure that it's super safe when you're doing it, before you're ever flying a drone. But I'm hoping that I can get it out there, get a nice shot of the store and the valley behind. But let's have a look. So what I'm doing is getting a few different angles, putting it down just in the uh, left-hand corner, as I kind of originally thought I would do on the shot. But that's looking really nice. Bring that in a bit closer. And then might get a little bit higher. I think that's going to be the one. So I bring the drone back nice and safe. And I think I've got my shots. I've taken a few shots of the, uh, of the UK's most remote camera shop, and, um, and, which I've really enjoyed doing. It's just really interesting. And hopefully, I'm gonna, I'm, I think I've got some interesting stuff there. But as, as with, the, with all 360 pictures, you can't really tell until you get back to the computer. But yes, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been fantastic. So we're all done here, uh, it's time to head back. Can't wait to see what Damien's come up with from the shoot today and uh, see what you guys think is your favorite.